So, if you are missing out, I can't say I haven't come across that fear before. For the former half of my life, ages 1 to 8, even as a one-year-old, I was fortunate enough to not miss out on anything. I was a regular child like the others. I loved playing sports and could run really fast. I won a medal every day at sports, uh, sports day. And I played cricket at a well-known academy and learned how to play the Western classical guitar and performed at many concerts. You know, uh, from ages 1 to 8, I was fortunate enough to experiment with everything that life had to offer and never really missed out on any activity. And for me, these initial years were extremely special, as soon after, my life would never really be the same again. One day in May 2013, I fainted in school during lunch break. I remember I was running around the school field with my friends after having finished my tiffin. And I just stopped to take a breather. But right then, I felt something churning in my stomach, wanting to exit my body. I thought it was just a bad bout of indigestion. But right then came an upchuck of vomit. And this vomit felt so acidic that on, on the way out, it felt like it was burning my throat. This left me unconscious on the school field amidst the chaos of the lunch break. And the next thing I remember seeing was my mother's weeping face as she sat next to me in the infirmary. I was taken home that day and put on a course of medicines to soothe my stomach. We all thought it was nothing too serious. But the vomiting persisted and it gradually grew occurring eight to ten times a day. Uh, my parents were really distraught and then began a barrage of gastrointestinal tests to get to the bottom of this. This went on for months but to no avail. Then we when we finally looked into it from every angle, I, we realized that I was being wrongfully diagnosed with a gastrointestinal disorder when it was actually something wildly different. In August of the same year, I was finally and definitively diagnosed with a brain tumor, specifically a brainstem glioma lodged between the second and third ventricle in my medulla. This tumor had birthed itself dangerously close to something called the area postrema or vomiting center of my brain. And as it was growing in size, it kept pressuring me on that center, causing me to vomit so very often and even developed breathing problems. And as if it couldn't get any worse for an eight-year-old, the tumor turned out to be inoperable, meaning if it was to be removed entirely via surgery, I would end up a paraplegic. So in August of that year, I went under the knife at Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai, to have the tumor debulked. But then began the most traumatic time of my life. I had to undergo radiation therapy and chemotherapy for 31 agonizing sessions. Due to radiation therapy, I had lost all my hair and even the taste in my mouth. And uh, I was quite a foodie. But at that time, it was I was suffering through so much nausea all the time that the food just wouldn't go down my throat. The radiation therapy required me to lie fastened tightly under the drum of a radiation machine, wearing an extremely suffocating face mask to prevent any movement which would otherwise disrupt the radiation process. These were collectively the worst 31 days of my life. It left me nauseated and weak, confused and crying. Then the chemotherapy course went on for three years, which saw me throw various tantrums, outright refusing to have my medicines, and even being caught flush, flushing the medicines down the toilet. There was constant drama at home, with my father trying to manage my mother crying all the time, and me being my mischievous self. 
uh, I had missed out on three months of school due to this ordeal, but was very graciously granted promotion to class four by the Martin Luther boys. I will forever be grateful to them for their concern and kindness. Uh, my teachers monitored me at all times to look for any discomfort and my friends helped me complete the schoolwork I, as I had to often rush home reeling from bouts of nausea. That was when the FOMO really hit me. I honestly thought I would go back to normal life before, after all my treatment. But the, this illness was not reasonable. It turned out to be that I couldn't even run anymore, let alone play sports. My right hand uh, stopped working actually. The fingers started curling and I couldn't even hold a pen anymore. It's much better now, but at that time I was like, I essentially just lost a limb. But uh, there were a lot of other problems. Uh, I had major balance issues as the tumor had affected my legs as well, as well as my bodily foundations. Uh, I, I had to pack my guitar away as I just couldn't strum it anymore. And essentially I had to pack my entire childhood away. I was depressed thinking about all my disabilities and uh, and I was a pretty good student up till now, but as the tumor had affected the cognitive abilities of my brain, my grades started slipping and the doctors at Tata counseled my parents to not pressurize me in any way. They advised me to take each day as it came. So I ultimately had to give up maths and science in class 9 and take up commerce to lessen the academic pressure. But amidst all this, I was very lucky to have my parents, relatives, and my friends gently nudge me to look at other avenues which I could pursue to overcome this fear. I dove into the world of video games and comic books, which I had lengthy discussions with my friends about. Enjoyable, very enjoyable. And, uh, uh, as I couldn't play cricket or tennis like before, my uncle, a national level golfer, encouraged me to take up golf, as it was a sport I could play at my own pace. And uh, that was a load of missing out taken care of. But then came the pandemic, and uh, I was not alone in missing out anymore, but everyone my friends, we were collectively there to miss out on the best life, best year in our school life, class 11, where we could have done quite a bit, but we were just at home looking at our screens, not attending online classes or everything. And that was when a lot of people rediscovered themselves and so did I. I rediscovered my interest in cooking and learning about food. I started cooking for my family once a week and still do. Uh, referring to many cookbooks and online articles and being able to cook my favorite dishes from restaurants, uh, which I couldn't go to at that time because of the world situation of the world, was very uh, was a very joyous thing for me. And uh, I also that was the time when I, when I solidified my taste in music. Before, earlier, I, I just listened to whatever was popular and didn't really have a taste of my own. But then, as I was bored and just bored during the lockdown and just sitting on my bed, I, I told my father to get me Spotify Premium and <laughs> just browsed through all the categories and landed up on 90s rock and early 2000s pop rock, with Oasis being one of my favorite bands, and Supersonic just might be my favorite song of all time. But I know that the fear of missing out will never really leave me, 
as the uh, tumor remains, still remains firmly lodged in my brain and I still have some long lasting issues, like still can't really keep my balance and uh, climbing downstairs without the help of a railing is an existential hazard for me. But uh, what keeps me going is the thought of the thousands of other children back in the hospitals in 2013 who weren't as fortunate as me. The fear of missing out will never really leave me, but I'm fine with that. And it's not all that bad now that I have better control over my lifestyle and everything I do. Um, and honestly, right now, I'm actually the happiest and most active I've ever been. As my friends uh, are about to leave Kolkata for colleges abroad, I have to remain here as I have to be closely monitored with blood tests and MRIs and medication. But I am pretty positive I'll find my own way and as my doctors had advised me back then to take each day as it comes. I want to end this speech by with a reference that encapsulates everything I've said now. It is don't look back in anger. My name is Yohan Sen and that was my story. Thank you.